Hello again. This time we will cover how to add controls to a GUI. Controls are things like text, buttons, sliders, etc. There are so many different controls that I cannot show you all of them, but we will cover some of the most common controls. Let's jump right in. This is how our application looks so far. We have this window or frame with a client size of 800 by 600 but it's completely empty at the moment. So let's open mainframe.cpp and add some controls. The first control we will add is a button. The button's constructor takes many parameters as you can see. The first parameter is the button's parent. We want our mainframe to be the parent so we should use this as argument. Next, we need an ID. You can see that it has type WX window ID, but that is just an alias for an integer. For now, we don't care about the ID, so we can just give it an arbitrary one using WX ID any. The next parameter is a string label. This is the text that will appear on the button. Pose is the position of the button's top left corner. I will set it to the point 150,50. Size is of course the size of the button. I will make it 100 pixels wide and 35 pixels tall. Don't worry about the remaining parameters for now. They are all optional and we will just leave the default values. If we start the application now, we would expect to see a small button with the label button close to the top left corner. Let's try it out. Well, that's unexpected. We do have a button with the correct label, but it fills the entire frame. Why is that? We clearly specified the size and position of the button. The thing is, that WX Widgets has a confusing feature. If a frame only has one child, then that child will stretch and fill all available space. Instead of adding our button directly to the frame, we should add a panel to the frame and then make our button a child of the panel instead. Now the panel will fill the entire frame and our button should appear as expected. Great. Note that the origin is the top left corner and Y values increase from top to bottom. We set the Y position of the button to 50, so it appears 50 pixels below the top of the frame. The next control we will add is a checkbox. As you can see, the parameters here are similar to those in the button's constructor. In fact, all the controls we will cover need a parent, an ID, a position and a size. All our controls will have the panel as parent and we will give them all arbitrary IDs. Label is the text that will appear next to the checkbox and I want it to be at the point 550,55. The checkbox is a fixed size control, which means it will always have a specific size. So I won't specify a size for it. When you don't specify a size, the default value WX default size will be used. Now we also have a checkbox. If I click on it, I can check and uncheck it. Most applications also need to display some text to the user. You can use WX static text for that. As the name and my label suggests, 
This text cannot be changed by the user. The default size will make the entire text visible, so it's best just to use that. Here is what it looks like. As you can see, I cannot change it. If you want the user to type in something, you can use a text control. The value parameter is the text that will appear in the control initially. For the size, I will use 200 comma minus 1. When you use minus 1, it means the default value. So this size will make the control 200 pixels wide and use the default height. In fact, WX default size is just a size object with both width and height set to minus 1. Here is what it looks like. We see the string we used for the value parameter, but the text can be changed by the user. The next control we will add is a slider. In addition to our usual parameters, we also have to set an initial value, a minimum value and a maximum value. I will use 25, 0 and 100 respectively. The height of the slider is fixed, so I have just set the width and used the default height. Here is our slider. Because of the initial minimum and maximum value, the handle is pulled to 25%. Of course, sliders are interactable, so I can also change its value like this. Next, we will add a gauge. A gauge is a bar which shows a quantity. It is often used to create a progress bar. In addition to the usual parameters, we have to set its range or maximum value. I will set it to 100. The gauge is not interactable. Its value is set from code. It looks a little bit boring like this when its value is 0, so let's set it to 50. Now we can see what it looks like. Sometimes you want the user to choose one of several options. Let's start by creating an array of strings. I will use WX widgets array string class, but you can also use a regular array if you prefer. If we want the user to choose one of these items, we can use a WX choice control. For the choices parameter, we will pass in our array of strings. If you want to use a regular string array, you should use this constructor instead. Here you have to pass in the number of strings and then the array itself. Let's see how it looks. When you click here, a drop down menu appears and you can choose one of the items. But you might want one of the items to be selected by default. To obtain that, just call select with the index of the item you want. If you need a less common control, it might not be included in the wx.h header file. For example, there's a control called wx spin control, which allows the user to select a number in a given range. To use it, 
we have to include the spincontrol.h header file. Let's try it out. Use a non-empty string for the value parameter if you want some text to appear inside the control initially. We can also set the minimum, maximum and initial value, but I will just use the defaults. We can click these buttons to increment or decrement the value. You can also type in a number, but if you try to add a letter, it won't let you. Furthermore, it won't accept a value outside the range. The next control is more common. It's called a list box. You can give it an array of strings, just like for WX choice. It looks like this. You can choose an item by clicking on it. And this control is also dynamic, so strings can be added and removed at runtime. The final control we will look at is called a radio box. You can use it when you have some mutually exclusive choices and you want the user to pick one. Besides the usual parameters, it takes a title and an array of choices. Here it is. As you can see, the title appears here, and then one button is added for each choice. Only one of the buttons can be toggled at a time. Note that we have dynamically allocated all of these controls using the new operator. And that's the way you should do it. Don't allocate controls on the stack like this. It can cause some serious problems. But shouldn't we be good programmers and deallocate memory when we are done with these controls? The answer is no. We don't have to worry about it. That's because WX Widgets takes care of deallocating the memory for these controls. When we close our application, the mainframe will be deleted and it will delete all of its children and they will delete their children and so on. I hope this video did a good job of explaining how to add controls to your GUIs. We have covered some common controls, but there are many more. I will leave some links in the description where you can check out what other controls exist. See you next time.